This podcast is part of the Shareable Podcast Network. Learn more at shareable.fm. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, but rarely do successful people get from point A to point B taking the most direct route. Host Jeffrey Klein speaks to a diverse mix of people to explore their story of success and the dots connected along the way. Thank you for listening. Here's your host, Jeffrey. For anyone who's interested in being their own boss, this is the episode for you. As I chat with Stephen Goodman, a real estate entrepreneur who also happens to be my father-in-law, he talks about the importance of being nice to people, of saying please and thank you as well as how critical it is to make sure you have something supporting you and not putting all your eggs in one basket and always, always understanding what the angle is in business. My guest today is Stephen Goodman, a successful British real estate entrepreneur. Though Stephen left school at age 15, likely due to his teachers not recognizing he had dyslexia, like many entrepreneurs, this did not impede Stephen's ability to work and work he did across a diverse set of jobs in multiple industries, from manufacturing to selling kitchens, to running a kosher style deli, to selling jewelry and textiles, running a restaurant, selling insurance policies, and even working as a traveling salesman of greeting cards and adult toys. Throughout all these myriad jobs, Stephen was involved in real estate, having purchased his first property when he was only 26. Over the past four decades, Stephen has bought, sold, built, and managed enough properties to fill multiple monopoly boards. With an incredible ability to understand the value of different properties that have had a mix of tenants from residential, retail, student housing, industrial, and even a portfolio of pubs to which he is known to some as the pub landlord. Throughout his career, his quick wit, business savvy, and amazing personality has helped him navigate sometimes challenging times, whether it was fires, drug dealers, gangsters, and even murders related to his properties. Stephen takes it all in stride and maintains a positive spirit approach to life, which earns him respect and adoration from everyone lucky enough to know him. In addition to being a brilliant businessman, he is a wonderful friend to many, a loving husband, father, brother, and grandfather. And for me, I feel extremely fortunate to have him as my father-in-law and someone I personally admire more than he may realize. Welcome, Stephen. Hi. Hi, Jeffrey. I know I had to say some nice things about you, but I, they're all true. They're all true. Shut up. I like to start from the beginning. Where were you born and what did your parents do for a living? Born in Salford, Manchester, and my father was a raincoat manufacturer. Raincoats. Raincoats. And your mother, did she work? Outerwear. And your mom? Housewife. So as a kid, uh, before you you left school, just maybe a little younger than that, did you have any uh, thoughts about what you wanted to be when you grew up? Well, I always wanted to be a pilot. Problem was, I couldn't read or write. Well, I don't think that's exactly true, but... um, so well, did you? I couldn't. I couldn't pass exams. Why? Why did you want to be a pilot? Always fancied it. Always wanted to be a pilot until uh, your. Am I allowed to say your mother-in-law? You are your wife. My wife bought me for my I, for my birthday a trial lesson in a small one-engine plane. And I went up from Manchester Airport, which at the time was called Ringway, because that's what it was called before Manchester Airport. I went up in an airplane, and the pilot was so boring, I wanted to throw myself out of the plane. That put me off. I thought, I don't need this. Uh, Did you have any role models when you are growing up? You know, obviously, the pilot didn't do it for you then. What about when you were younger? Did you look at someone and say, oh, I want to be like that person? No, not really. I just wanted to work hard. I just wanted to be successful, like everybody wants to do. Everyone wants to be successful. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea. I used to go by the seat of my pants. Successfully by the seat of the pants. Uh, As I'm kind of obsessed with stories, and you've told many, many stories, when you were growing up, was there someone in the family or a friend who was a really good storyteller? Uh, No, not really. Believe it or not, not really. <laughs> Your father just... seemed to be able to spin a yarn. No, 
Not at all. I nobody used that that it could really hold my attention. No, nobody. Um, well, it's very short. Very short because my retention is very short. I could go to a meeting. Are you am I allowed to elaborate? You may. I could go to a meeting with three bank managers there, which I often did. They'll all be firing questions, and after ten minutes, I got bored. So my eyes started to roll. So after that, I had to take people in with me. And this was to do a deal with somebody. This was to do a big deal. But I like to get to the point quickly. I can't be bothered with all the rubbish. Well, I have uh, someone who knows you very well. I have to point out that when you talk about retention, one of the things you do have an incredible memory for facts and figures and things of that nature. But only for things that interest me. Right. Fair enough. I'm not. If it doesn't interest me, it doesn't matter how many times you tell me somebody's name, unless it's somebody of interest, like talking to your dad or something like that, that I can remember. But if if the person isn't interesting, it doesn't matter how many times you tell me, I can go and show somebody around a pub and I can go with Mike and I'll have to ask Mike three times what's his name. You know, we go to meetings and I've got to nudge him. Who the hell am I talking to? Because it's not struck a chord. If you talk facts and figures, I can remember things from years and years ago. I can think things are bought, things are sold. Can't always remember the address. But it's like if I go to a place once, I know how to get there again. I don't need a roadmap. I can actually go there. I've got a good sense of direction because it's of interest. If it's not of interest, but it, it's, may I just diversify? Okay. Once I went to look at a pub and I thought to myself, I'm sure we've got something around here. And it was a pub that you owned, literally a tenth of a mile away over a hill. So I decided it was the commercial in Cole, in the, mm -hmm. the commercial in, is it Chatterton? In Cole. In, no, no, not Rochda that. Rochdale. In Rochdale, literally the pub was 500 yards away. But it, 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 that's how that's how I, re I remember things I want to remember. Sorry, go ahead. So, well, you did lots of things, as I mentioned in your bio. What was your first paying job? Working in my father's manufacturing business. And how much do you remember? I think you told me, how much did you get paid? Oh, about 10, 15 pounds a week. So you've been involved in a lot of different businesses. Why do you think that the property business is the one that kind of stayed through the through the whole time? Because I enjoy the cut and thrust. Uh, I enjoy the the I look at the angle generally. Well, I've not been successful in everything. You can admit that. I, the two of us can admit it. You win some, you lose some. But I've always found that um, I've gone back to it because I understand it. Mm -hmm. And all your different um, career paths that you've been through, is there a particular place you were surprised to find yourself, whether it was a location or engaging with a certain kind of person um, that you're like, I would you couldn't have imagined, you know, that this is where you would have ended up at some point? I could have imagined where I could have ended up or I did end up. Like, we the day you went to one of the pubs in um stockport mm. and you phoned me up and you said to me i said have you got rid of the fellow and you said no i think you should come down there's a slight problem what's the problem there's a fellow there called terry who was about seven foot tall 15 feet wide well not quite that big who wanted to know basically did we want protection so i rushed down like a lunatic and i says well we ended up he sorted it out for us which he, he did us a favor in the end mm -hmm. and that's how so if you would have said to me was that day going to end up like it did it ended up at the end of the day we did all right out of it but i think part of that is because of your ability to get along with lots of different people correct and um, and also your ability, you know, I, I think that you're you're a very good storyteller, the gift of the gab. Yeah, um, if, you, if you speak to people, 
speak to them nicely and approach them as a normal, instead of talking down to people. Mm -hmm. If you talk down to people, you get nowhere. If you talk nicely to people, please and thank you, as your wife will admit, she can talk the, what is it, out of the trees, the birds out of the trees <laughs> through talking to people. And I've always said, say please and thank you, gets you a lot further than treating people like dirt. And do you think that ability to kind of get along with people is something that you either have or is it something that you can kind of develop? No, you? it's something you have. Um, what is it, you know, the word entrepreneur is something that's developed and become very popular in the last 20 probably years. And for a long time, I don't think people had as much a, of a sense of it. What does it mean to you to be an entrepreneur? I mean, uh, I, running things, running things the way I want to, them to run, um, going into something, making a success of something, um, making good living, uh, having the having the the whereabouts to do it and say to yourself, right, I can make this successful. I can do this. It can, listen, you don't win them all, but so long as you have a go, you'll never ne you'll never know if you don't have a go. Fortunately, you... I've all, pardon. Sorry, go on. Fortunately, I've been in the position to have a go with things. You're not always successful, but if you, that's an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is somebody like Elon Musk who decided to do something. He took the bull by the horns. He's a brilliant, brilliant man, and he's been successful. But he nearly, nearly came unstuck. It was only due to NASA giving him a contract, according to his book, for one point. He was a week away from going under. The same with um, the, the Amazon boss. Mm -hmm. He was a few weeks away from going under. It was purely the time. That's and, and an entrepreneur. That's an entrepreneur. A lot of successful entrepreneurs fail. Correct. And, Correct. Uh, this is it. It's, it's not that you're always successful. It's what do you do when you're not successful? Correct. If you, if things when I am not successful, you I sit back and say, well, could I have done it differently, a different way? I don't think I could have done. Should I have done this? Should I have gone in the restaurant business? No, I shouldn't. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, right? Do you think anyone can be an entrepreneur? No. Let, let me rephrase that. Do you think anyone can be a successful entrepreneur? Because everyone can be an entrepreneur, but whether you can no, be nobody, you've got to, it, it's, it's in your metabolism, I think. It's to, to have a go. You know, if, if you have a go and 12 months down the line, you're still earning nothing and it's not going to take off, you've got to be able to say, enough's enough. I've had a go. And maybe lots shift. Of, whether you correct. Shift you go, in, go and get a job somewhere else. I mean, there's a, a lot of people. B. Correct. Plan B, you've got to have a dot plan B. You you can't you can't flog a dead horse. Well, I you found can. that entrepreneurs and you in particular, you don't just have plan B. You've got plan B, C, D, E, F. Yes, yes. You have to have, you know, in the, at the background, when I'm when I'm doing calculations, have you frozen? No, go ahead. Uh, you froze for a moment. As you say, you do plan A, B, C, D. I sold something. Sorry, my phone. Give me one second. We'll be... There we are. Go on. Uh, like, for example, I promise Ruth I'd try and slow down. How's that working out it's for you? Possible. <laughs> no sooner did I sell something on Wednesday of this week. I promise Ruth I wouldn't buy anything. But on Thursday, I exchanged contracts on something different because I can see the angle in it. There's all, there's always trying to be an angle. I mean, if I was to sell it, if today, if you sell things, if you have money and you put it in the bank, you earn nothing at all, absolutely nothing. In fact, according to the Times today, they're going to start charging people to have money in the bank. Now, not that I've got a lot of money, but the point is, it's doing nothing for you. For example, I don't know, I'm allowed to elaborate. Yes, of course. I was talking to a fellow who's in the pub business, uh, Florets, mm -hmm. only on Friday. And he phoned me and he said, why don't I sell a whole portfolio of stuff? Oh, I can get you a good price because people are paying 
top dollar and this, that, and the other. And you, you, it's no good selling one or two. You might all sell a dozen and one thing or another. I said, yes, but if I have a, a, a dollop of money in the bank, what am I going to do with it? Everybody's phoning me for things to sell. Mm -hmm. So if someone, you know, one of the things I think that you said uh, about being an entrepreneur is being your own boss. Um, and I think that's, you know, running your own things, making your own destiny, your own decisions. If someone came to you who wanted to be their own boss, maybe they are in a business or maybe they're not, you know, what, how would you advise them? Um, to work hard, and put your all into it. That's it. Work hard, put your all into it, give it a period of time. And you if can't, yes. What would you, you say about the bumps in the road? Because Yes, bumps in the road. You, you can't say to somebody, well, have a go, and if it doesn't go, call it a day. You can't give up after. You don't put everything you've got. I always tell people, don't put everything you've got into it. Mm -hmm. Make sure. I mean, I've been into businesses, whereas I put lots into it, but I've always kept my house out of it because I always wanted a roof over my head. Oh, and the main thing is, you asked me a question before, why did they get involved in the property business? A, I knew I, was, I, I had a slight flair for it, but I thought to myself, and the one thing was, because of my education, one thing or another, my father did try and educate me, but you can't educate someone who can't read and write sort of thing. And I got involved in my first property because I thought I wanted to get married. We got married and we had a flat. And I thought if it all turns to to dirt, to dirt, if I lose everything, I lose my home as well. Mm -hmm. That's why I bought a property because I could always sell that. And that would pay off somebody. And then I bought another, another, another. And that's how, well, how really I got into property. And I will say, if you said, you asked me a question, would, what would I advise to somebody? Put what you can afford to lose. Mm -hmm. Do not put more than you can afford to lose. So there's there's a couple of people who talk about it and they have a term that they kind of said, which is the side hustle. So that if you want to be an entrepreneur, don't give up your job, but try and do it on the side at night, on the weekend, and, and see so, so that you don't give up. And if you fail, you die, you know, everything falls apart. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have that ability to kind of do it as you're, as you're still – Working Unless, you know, if, if it t if it takes off, then that's fine and fantastic. Then you give a job. But you've got to have something behind you. Because if it turns, the last thing you want to do is end up in the street with no roof over your head, no money, and said, oh, I could have done it. Because there's a lot of people like that. You've got to have something at the back of you. Like a good father-in-law. Thank God I have that. <laughs> How would you define success for yourself? Or for anyone, how do you define success? I would define it by being happy, mm -hmm. having a great family, roof over my head, food on the table, and good health. Mainly the good health. That's how I would define it. Because you can only eat three meals a day. I mean, I know somebody who you know who's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got everything. But... If you looked at him and there was a hundred people in the queue and you said, pick out the wealthiest man here, you would never pick him. Never been first class on a, a plane. He's never been business class. He could buy the airline without thinking. And he doesn't because he says, I can only eat three meals a day. The fact that he's got a Ferrari and a dozen Bentleys in a garage, which he's just built for 30 cars, just so he can look at. He's no happier than I am. Well, he probably is, but... <laughs> I don't think so. No, go on. What inspires you, Stephen? What, what inspires me? Hard work and seeing other people successful. I love to see, and my family being successful, my son-in-laws, my daughters, my grandchildren. That's all, that's what inspires. That's what gives me the thrill in life. If you could go back and give your 21-year-old self a piece of advice, what would it be? To get stuck in, mm -hmm. take calculated risks, and go for it. Remember to always make sure you have something behind you as a fallback. 
That's what I would tell myself. And also to buy Amazon shares. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure Amazon was around when you were 21, but never mind. Never mind. Right. Carry on. Um, what do you think is going to happen next in, in kind of real estate? You know, do you think it's trending upwards? It's been pretty, is it going to come falling down? Well, are, the are there going to be different ways that people are going to live? Like, what do you think is coming next? Well, people are now moving out of the towns. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting, I don't know whether I told you that, I had a meeting with my bank manager a year ago. We were walking through Manchester city centre and all you can see are these enormous tower blocks. Go back 20 years, there was nothing, nothing at all. I bought three flats in Manchester, well, two, and I got rid of them. Did well, made money on them. I think it was the time you took my daughter out. Mm. Right? I should have realised that, that was the big mistake. But anyhow, I was with the bank manager a year ago. We took my wife and I, Ruth and I, out for lunch. Went out for lunch and they've got all these tower blocks. And I said, who's buying them? He said, Singaporean people, Chinese people from Bahrain, all investors, they're all buying them. I said, well, who's living in them? It's all young entrepreneurs and one thing and another. I spoke to him the other day. I said, how's it going? Because of the coronavirus, which has affected a lot of people, he said, most of these tower blocks, if they're not finished and they're halfway done, they'll be mothballed because people don't want to live in town now. They've mm. been locked up for weeks and weeks, three months because of Corona. I mean, Corona, they'll get over it. Things will come back. But people don't want to live in high rise blocks today. They sat there on the 17th floor of a building in a flat, which the expression is you can't swing a cat. People are now going houses with a garden and one thing or another so i said to him i said when was the last time you were in manchester now he's the manager of a big bank he said he was three months earlier he's done a thousand miles in his car in three months normally it's a it's about a 50 mile drive there and back to his mm -hmm. home each day he, everybody's working from home my solicitor at the time had 128 staff. I was in there last Wednesday on doing this contract. Out of 128 staff in their offices, four were working. Aaron, my uh, family friend, a relation, distant relation, he works in a finance, uh, an estate agency in Manchester who do valuations. He said there's uh, 150 people in their offices and only 10 turn up. I think the trend is going to be out of the city centres. People cannot afford the rents and the weights and one thing or another. All these big companies are going to the wall. So if, if that's elaborated enough, then yep. that's fine. And and what about yourself? You're going to continue? You keep saying you're going to slow down? No. Don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> she's not listening. <laughs> no, I can't slow down. What am I going to do? I love the challenge. Spend more time with your grandchildren. Yeah, if I was invited to America, I might. <laughs> You're invited. I can't help the fact that they won't let you out. Exactly. <laughs> probably come, but you couldn't get back. It might be worth thinking about. No, my idea is, in fact, you asked me a question. Just The, the truth is that I was talking to Mike and Richard, and I said, Give it a few more years and I'll turn around it. Because one thing I should have done, which, I, joking aside, I should have got somebody like Normie to manage my properties. He's managing three. I have no problems. I don't see them. We just get paid the rent each month and it needs an agency mm. to manage it properly. So instead of you having to chase, and I'm talking to you now, having to chase people, okay. they do it. All right, so now we're up to our rapid fire section of this. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question and just kind of first thing that comes to your mind. This is, Am I allowed to look at the sheet that I wrote down? I will allow it. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, is it better to be a planner or a doer? Doer. Everything I've done is be by the seat of my pants. Should stories always have a happy ending? Uh, hopefully they will. Uh now I know you've done karaoke with your mostly watching your grandchildren do karaoke, but 
if you could do a song or I'll, I always ask it, do you have a favorite song? Um, well, the one song I always have in the car on a, on a tape or a disc, no matter how often I threw it out of the car, I'd always end up with another one. And it was funny enough, it was called I Believe in Miracles by Errol Brown. Do you believe in miracles? Would you rather be smart or lucky? I'd like I'd sooner be smarter than I am now. Well, I, I'm going to diverge, uh, digress for one second. They've developed over time. I think the conventional way is that you have, you know, academic smarts. But in fact, they've recognized that there are lots of other kinds of intelligence, emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence. And I would argue that while you may not think you have the academic intelligence, you are off the charts in some of these other person-to-person -person emotional intelligence, and that's part of why you're so successful. Yeah, it's re that, uh, going back to the question you asked before. It's reading people. Mm -hmm. For example, and I'm sorry to elaborate again, the thing that I bought on Thursday, a fellow only phoned me up two weeks ago and said that they were selling the place he was in. Would I be interested? Mm -hmm. I went down. Had a walk round. I was there for fifteen minutes and decided to go ahead. And that was that's how. And I've only been in once more since. I've had no valuation done, nothing. That's how I bought it. You're a man of instinct. Yeah. You have a feeling in your water. Someone once said. Correct. That's it. You get a feeling, in groin. Uh, oh. Can can money buy happiness? No, but it's better than being poor. Can you name a book that left a lasting impression on you? No, because I've never read anything. Hardly ever read anything. I that's mean... Not, that's not true. No, I read the Financial Times. I get the, We get the Times every day. I said to Ruth only a few weeks ago, if she stopped getting the paper, I think I'd kill myself. Because I've got friends that say, oh, why did you get the paper? Why did you read it? I said, I, I enjoy reading the rubbish. What about what you just mentioned? You referenced earlier Elon Musk's book. Yeah. I, oh, yes, I read that. I read that because I was on holiday. I only read when I'm on holiday. And I've only just started it because it'll take me time to read. Whereas it would take Ruth three or four days to read. It will take me 10 days to read. But I sit there, I don't speak, and I'm happy to read it. But if you ask me what I've read at the end of it, I have no idea. Well, you just told me that yeah. uh, Elon Musk came this close to. So you yes, because it was in because it was in the papers over the weekend. It was in the Financial Times. They were discussing Elon Musk and what's the fella called from um, uh, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Yeah, they were talking. The two of them are both racing to the moon. They're both come very close to bankruptcy. They're both the wealthiest, two wealthiest men in the world. I, I read his book. I haven't read the other fellow's book, but I've read his book, if he's got one. And I don't think there's any... I agree with Donald Trump. There's no such thing as global warming. <laughs> I might have to edit that out. Uh, yes, all right. Miss, miss falsehoods. Uh, can you name a favourite movie? Because I know you've seen lots of those. No, there's, there's only one movie. Oh, what to talk about? It's a Wonderful Life with James Stewart. In fact, I was saying to Ruthie, it's coming out for Christmas Day. She can go out and leave me with a box of tissues because I'll cry my eyes out. When Zuzu gets the petals, that's it. It's all over. Next. What's the one thing you can't live without? My Ruthie and the family. Although I have come close to killing her recently due to me breaking her. It's my fault she broke her arm. Tell me, how can it be my fault? Because you left the, the dishwasher dish. open. But it's been there for 22 years. It hasn't moved. But it's usually the thing is up. No, but she's talking, walking backwards. You should know that. After all these years of living with her. 22 years it's been there and it's my fault. <laughs> If you could be credited with inventing something, what would it be and why? The internet. Why? 
because every walk of life uses it. Everybody knows it, everybody except me. Right? In fact, I still don't do internet banking. And George is screaming at me. Dad, it's so easy. I said, it might be for you. It ain't for me. Stephen, as always, it is a pleasure chatting with you and I appreciate your time and your enthusiasm for life. And I, I, I do appreciate it, not just now, but always. And I, I know, want to I thank know. you for helping us connect the dots. The Thank you for taking your time to listen to this podcast. Please subscribe on your preferred podcast platform so you don't miss any future episodes. If you could also do me a favor and please leave a review on iTunes, I would really appreciate that. Remember, story matters and is the best way to connect the dots.